So the next thing we want to show you is uh, a new feature called Curve Shaper. There's actually two cool things going on with this system. So one, one is the new Curve Shaper feature. The other, we have this system actually running in Expo uh, DDR8000, which is something that was very challenging to do on the previous gen. So with the changes we've made in the product, we're able to now do DDR8000 with Expo, and we have a new Curve Shaper. So, uh, Dan, do you want to go to the graph? All right, so this is, so Grant kind of went over this high level. Basically, the, the previous solution we had, which was curve, uh, curve optimizer, it moved the whole VF curve with one parameter, right? So it was nice, you can take margin out, but it was only as good as the weakest part of your VFT curve. Right? So whatever your your weakest point was at high frequency or if it was at low temperature or whatever, that would limit the performance of your system. And it, it might not matter for you in that it, the, the things that are performing critical for you might not operate in that region. So what we've done on the 9000 series is we've added Curve Shaper. And so it's now a multi-dimensional thing you can do to take margin out of the part. And it's we basically divided the curve into 15 bands and it's temperature and frequency. So it's, there's five frequency bands and three temperature bands. And in each, in each of those combinations, you can apply an individual offset to take margin out of the part or add margin for whatever reason. Um, and it lets you fully customize the, the response of the system while remaining in, in PBO and having the part be, you know, having managed overclocking. So, Okay, so yeah, can you go to the table? Yep. All right, so what we've been doing, we've been, uh, before we started, I collected some benchmarks. Uh, this is breakout five. This is the last chance to set the highest record. So the, the previous sessions have done pretty well, so we're gonna have to work pretty hard. But the current world record is the first column. The second column is the stock performance. So if you just clear BIOS to default, boot up and run, that's what you get. So what I've done now on this system, uh, I can show you here, I've enabled PBO and I've enabled Expo. So Expo has my memory running at 4,000, the DDR 8,000, and I have uh, PBO enabled. So those are the two changes, this is kind of out of the box, managed overclocking. So now we'll run an event. Hopefully, we see an improvement in score. So, I'll start a multi core run. I can tell it's running faster already. <laughs> okay, it's, it's done. Ooh, okay. 43905. So you can see that just by doing PBO and Expo, we saw a 2,000 point increase. All right. So that's nice, but you know, the previous gen could do that. So now what we've added is the curve shaper and curve optimizer. For the, so for this next part, I have to go into BIOS. So for now, I'll ask you all to, to come around to this side if you can. So I can show you what I'm doing with BIOS. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the Azrock Tai Chi, and we're going to go into the advanced menu, and you the overclocking, you go into there, except you go into PBO, vision with overdrive. So under here, you can see there's a new option now, Ooh, curve shaper, so this was not there on the previous generation. If you go into that, you can see this is that 3 by 5 matrix I was talking about, and you, and you can enter individual numbers for each of these points. 
to, to shape that expert. Now, we don't have time for all that, so I have a, a default profile ID. So I will load that. And then once that loads, I will show you what it, what it programs. So if we go back here, for shapers. Now you can see, in this min frequency and this low frequency, I left it on auto. Mm -hmm. So that will not apply an additional, additional adjustment. But in this medium frequency, I took negative five steps. And also on the high frequency. So on six of the, of the 15 points. And then on the max frequency, I left it on auto again. So if you think about it, on nine of the points, it's not doing an adjustment, but on six of them, it's taking an additional five steps. All right. So while this boots, that's something you do to try and get a little more out of the system. Um, I will also apply the curve optimizer on top of this. And, and the nice thing is that those two features you know, play with each other and that they, they add. So you can add a generic offset to all 15 points. So basically the curve is from the temperature. From the temperature, it's temperature and frequency. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's temperature and frequency. So, you know, it just has to do with different parts have different characteristics, you know, where they have more or less margins. So all right, so we'll go into Ryzen Master. And what I'll do here is go to the curve optimizer and I'll also go to minus 10. So now this will add minus 10 to everything, but those six points from the curve shaper will get an extra minus five. So go to minus 15. All right, and then we will run Cinebench, see what we get. All right. So previously we were at Four three eight nine five. No. Four three nine oh five. Nine five. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we're doing the curve optimizer plus the curve shaper. Four five three oh three. Ooh. Just from those additional adjustments. So pretty, pretty nice that just with making some changes in BIOS or Ryzen Master, you can get that much more performance. Four, All right. Five three zero three. Yeah. Four five zero three. So you just uh, decrease the frequency. I de decrease the voltage. Uh, voltage yeah. for those frequency points. Yes. Yes. And I took more out where Cinebench runs. Mm -hmm. That way I get the performance of Cinebench, but I keep the stability for other parts of the curve. But how's the power and yeah. the temperature if but you tune in like that? So right now we're still in managed overclocking. Yeah. So with PBO, yeah. it'll it'll um, manage to the platform limit. Right. So I think if we look in, you're, since, in since you're lowering the yeah. voltage for yeah. every frequency point, you really shouldn't. You're 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 at any given temperature, your voltage maximum voltage is is going to be dependent. So literally, you shouldn't see any increased temperatures. Um, and in normal operation, you should see it generally cooler. Uh, if you're yeah. power constrained, mm -hmm. then your temperatures are going to be lower. Correct. All right. And remember, you know, it's just trying to keep a lower voltage at all time. But right. the managed overclocking is trying to uh, maximize performance and chase the power limits and the temperature limits. So there's this balance, but the net is your voltage is lower. So for a given amount of work done, your power and the temperature will be lower. Right? Those are different ways to kind of think yeah. about it. Yeah, in some sense, it, the part's actually running more efficiently. Yeah. And because it's running more efficiently, it can get better performance. Per, per, yeah. per watt, yeah. All right, um, that's everything yeah. I have here. Okay, so we didn't break the world record yet, but Bill, Bill is, is gonna, gonna try. Show you his attempt. All right. I say attempt in quotes. Well, we got a new world record now that's a lot harder than earlier today when we started. That's true. That is true. Okay. How's it going? We will cool down. 
from a negative 30 degrees C. And uh, I'm going to cool it down to like negative 100 or so. Meantime, let's get a warm up run here going. So now uh, set 5 gigahertz, uh, go ahead and continue cooling it down, and then this should be pretty close to uh, what uh, stock performance is. Pretty close. So the world record for Cinebench R23 right now um, is held by our current generation AM5 7950X, um, and on that one it's on LN2 running 6.7 gigahertz. Right? So You've all seen the leaks, right? For the performance uplift of GNR. So how fast do you think GNR needs to be running to match uh, Raphael at 6.7 gigahertz and beat that score? What was the Raphael frequency? The Raphael was 6.7 gigahertz. So how fast do you think I need to run this to beat that score? Any guesses? 6.2? 6.2? All right, any other guesses? 6.4. 6.4. All right. How about I make it easy? Let's see. All right, let's try this. Let's pull it down a little bit. All right, so I'm at negative 90. So the world record was 50,843. Yeah. It's 6.7 gigahertz. Now we're running 5.9. And that beat it by a lot more than I thought. <laughs> 51,333. Ooh. How much? So uh, I got 51,333. Uh, 5133. 5.9. 5.9. You right. broke the 6.7 record. Yeah. Right? So Splay isn't going to be happy, but um, I think we can do better because um, I already got 50 something. You had it up there earlier. Uh, Let's see. Oh, you want to know what the all time? Nah, right? we can. So we'll try six gig real quick. Actually, I'll try six gig and we'll see what we get. And then I'm going to try some other benchmarks real quick. No, no. Maybe try to max out. Okay, so six gigahertz is at 1.48 volts, which is more than I need. Um, it's just a safe voltage for LN2 where I know it, it'll be stable. So, But um, you could shave a lot of power off if you optimize and reduce that voltage. Okay, 52,006. Okay, so Bill, to break the all time session record today, 55046. Okay, we hit 50. Oh, I forgot we hit 55. <laughs> okay. You got to do it. Okay, so we'll try sixty two hundred. Okay, and I had this open. If I close all this junk, um, it would actually get a little bit higher score, but and you can't see. And you can't see. Okay, six point two. Five, five, seven. I'm gonna come back to this. We already shattered the world record, so you know I'll get another one real quick. I'll beat W prime real quick. So I'm not even gonna change anything, and we'll see. So the world record for this is 1.61 seconds. Lower is better. So let's see. And it's done. 1.462. Do 6.5. Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, so this is gonna be tricky. <laughs> I can do better. 1.404. Okay, 1.386. That I'm happy with. Yes. All right, let me go to R15. Let's do R15. Sweep it. So what's the world record on R15? It's 8,052. <clears throat> okay, let's drop the frequency back to 6. Okay. Negative 115, and let's go. World records, eight one. Okay, close. All right, close. so I need like another 130 points. <clears throat> 120 points. <clears throat> so probably 6.1 will do it. Okay, will it run 6.1? No, so. Cool. This will do it. If not, I'll run it over and over. Okay, eight one five two. Now we have eight two nine seven. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, let's do six point three. Oh. 407. What? Okay, should we go see Eight, how high four, it'll go? Eight, four, Let's see. What was that at, Bill? 6.3? Uh, 6.3, yep. 6.7. Oh, cool. uh, Thank you. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> None of the 